Hi, my name is Joel Benedict and this is an essay on uh, science and technology. Uh, imagine two friends that like each other very much and party together, but are opposites in many areas. The conflicts in beliefs, hobbies, and personal interests seem all that more important when the relationship turns to marriage. Like marriage, the relationship between technology and science is complex and dynamic. This essay will cover the differences, similarities, cross-applicability, and cooperation between science and technology. So can the two be friends? Can uh, Godzilla and Mechagodzilla and Jet Jaguar and all these other guys, can they be friends? Uh, they represent science and technology uh, and they come from different beginnings. The differences between technology and science are defined by the desired end goals. Whereas science is directed at the discovery of knowledge for its own sake, technology develops and employs knowledge in order to get something done. The goal of science is to know more about the subject study. The goal of technology is to get something done by use of technique, or in other words, to achieve a human objective. So this guy might want to build a house. That's his cultural objective. Uh, it's his objective is to get something done, to accomplish something. And even though this guy's goal is to blow up the other guy's house, he still has uh, a goal to get something done, uh, to achieve a human objective. Uh, technology clearly relates to cultural and commercial demands. While science studies tangible truths, uh, science does not always clearly relate to immediate tangible demands. Um, so here we've got a picture of glycine and it's talking about all the science going on behind that and it's not immediately clear how this applies to uh, what's going on in the tangible world. Uh, scientists study objective facts but are affected by cultural context as well. Scientific inquiry is a human creation that is shaped by cultural patterns, economic and political interests, uh, and gender-based ways of seeing the world. Though the end goals of uh, practical technology and intellectual science differ, the practice of both is shaped by patterns, economic and political interests, and demographic and social interests. Technology and science share the end goal of uh, applicability to culture and the tangible world. So even though this isn't immediately clear how it applies, um, if you see that science is describing the real world and the tangible st stuff that's going on, uh, you can eventually bring it back to uh, patterns and economic and political interests, um, stuff that's going on, uh, for example, the farming stuff, whatever. Both technology and science are based on the gathering of knowledge, and they both advance uh, through the cumulative development of that knowledge. Isaac Newton could see further if he stood on the shoulders of giants. The cumulative development of that knowledge is a city that grows in size and height as more people add to the construction. And here we see, uh, you know, engineers and technologists and scientists all constructing the city of knowledge. Culture is a foreman that directs where improvements in thought and intellect are needed. The improvements ultimately come from a subset of culture, human creativity. And here we see this uh, sci-fi looking city and it's built out of human creativity, uh, but it's, it's based on a foundation of science and technology. Human creativity generates information whether the study is science or technology. Participants of both studies serve as translators, decoding information into one system and transforming it into information usable in another. Technology and science are different systems with universally usable information. So here's a website of some technology translators and they convert science into technology and technology into science. Same with these guys. Uh, UCL Department of Space and Climate Physics. Uh, translation is not like alchemy. It is more like photosynthesis. You've got the same uh, fuel, the same energy, 
and it's being converted into different things. You know, uh, light's being converted into carbohydrates and uh, that kind of thing. The studies have different solutions to different problems with the use of the same information. Scientific technology uh, thinking converges toward a single, if temporary, set of theories, while the whole of technology uh, is replete with examples of the old saying that there's more than one way to skin a cat. The goal of science is to converge toward a single, universal set of principles to govern general solutions. So, technology has a bunch of different solutions, but science has the, the goal is to reach a single consensus proof. Kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, you can prove it in this roundabout way, but your goal is to come out with a solution. Technology is more like these mouse traps where you've got, you know, umpteen million mouse traps being made for the same purpose. The goal of technology is to use human creativity, culture, and science to govern particular solutions to a finite set of problems. Human creativity translates into scientific technology. John Ambrose Fleming was a scientifically trained engineer and teacher who is closely associated with the electrical industry and engineering training institutions. And he worked with uh, Thomas Edison, or used Thomas Edison's technology, and he improved on it to do a bunch of different stuff with radio. And here's this cool monument dedicated to radio and technology stuff. He also made this triode um, out of his experience as an electrical engineer and science, science teacher, which crossed over both fields to create a new invention, both scientific and technological. And this is based off of his knowledge of both. When technology is pushed from science into technology, it often happens indirectly. Technologists focused on a particular problem solvable without scientific solutions to all instances of the problem. Like these Damascus blades. The people who made them didn't know what gave the metal these special properties, uh, but they made really nice blades. Uh, when the science um, was taken away, the uh, metal that they used to make the blades uh, was taken away, they didn't understand why the quality of the blades changed. Um, so in some cases, technology does need uh, science to make it work. However, technologists take an indirect, narrowly applicable piece of scientific knowledge to solve a particular problem. Nanotechnology is a good example of that. The interactive innovation uh, sequence of science and technology is complex, nonlinear, and two-way. And nuclear stuff is really complicated and uses both uh, technology and science. Uh, and this is a good example of the interaction between those two. Technology more often gives science knowledge for advancement. Technological development also plays a role in the scientific advance by supplying devices and instruments that are essential for scientific inquiry. And this is some kind of scientific instrument. Science and technology use different strengths, goals, and practices to cooperatively create new applications to advance technology. Although science and technology differ greatly, like these two guys, the human culture fuses the differences into a complementary whole for the benefit of culture and humanity.